So if you have any interest in going down the real mowing rabbit hole, eventually you're gonna land at these power rotary scissors. I wanna talk about how I set mine up and what I'm using, everything about this setup here, and hopefully give you some insight into what's required in order to run these and just some general things to know. Here we go. Now, if you find yourself in situations around your yard, like I do, where you have areas that you just can't reach with the real mower, you're gonna wanna trim around the edges to clean those up. When you're cutting low, string trimmer isn't really the best tool to use because it will very easily scalp the grass and you'll have yellow lines or yellow marks coming down your edges and nothing diminishes a shortcut lawn more than scalp marks. So the go-to solution for a lot of people are these power rotary scissors. Now what these are is it's, a, it's an attachment that attaches to your string trimmer on the, on the end and it has two spinning discs with, with teeth on the end of them and they spin fast enough and create these scissors so that you can basically have a scissor cut around your edges. So there's a couple of options out there for rotary scissors. I believe these are some of the most popular ones. These are the iDeck power rotary scissors. I believe I got them off of Amazon and it's just a replacement for the end of your existing trimmer if it's compatible. And I'll talk more about that in a minute, but it comes with several adapters to fit your existing um, tool and takes just a few minutes to install and you're ready to go. Now I decided to attach this to uh, an electric tool. This is the Milwaukee M18 brushless motor. This particular model um, can accept multiple tools, so it will take a stick edger or a string trimmer, you can change them out. And with battery equipment, that's important to know if you want to use rotary scissors. You have to find a tool that supports multiple attachments like this one does. So if, if you can change out the string trimmer for a stick edger, then you'll be able to run rotary scissors on your ba battery powered tool. The reason for that is because the motor that runs everything on the business end here is back up here by the battery on the battery side. So you have to find one or have one already that accepts multiple tools and the motor is on the battery side. Now, if you're thinking you wanna go gas, you can totally do that, but you just need to make sure that your engine is powerful enough in order to support these. Now, their website says that they require at least 25 cc's in order to um, have ideal performance here. So I haven't tried this out on a gas machine before. I've only ever run it on this Milwaukee. I thought about trying it out on my Echo, which is the PAS225. That only has 21 cc's, so I didn't even wanna even try and I wanted it to all be kind of separate anyway, so I can just kind of grab and go with whatever I wanted to use. So I opted to um, make an additional investment um, in a new string trimmer. So I got the Milwaukee M18 string trimmer um, that accepts multiple tools, and then took the string trimmer part of it off and substituted it for the rotary scissors. Now the last part of my setup here is probably the, one of the more noticeable parts of this and that's the Darwin's grip handle here. That's this white handle extension. And I'll talk more about that in a second when I do a little review of this here. Now as far as reviews are concerned, I want to just kind of give you my thoughts on how it's been for me using these rotary scissors and how I like my setup and let you kind of decide what you want to do and go from there. Now first things first, this is not a cheap setup. This is an additional investment into uh, your tools and the tools that you use around the yard. And for those of you that have been looking into getting into real mowing or that are already in the rabbit hole of real mowing, you understand that real mowing in and of itself is an investment already. So that's why it's a rabbit hole. This is just another step down the rabbit hole here. So it is expensive. The rotary scissors are expensive. And if you don't already have a tool to support the rotary scissors, there's an added expense there 
to buy that additional tool, which is the process I had to go through. The next thing I wanna point out is that these rotary scissors are not quiet. After a while, you kinda of get used to them, but they are pretty loud. The last thing I wanna point out with this is the angle in which you hold it down to the ground. It's too big, so the better way to explain it is when you're holding it, it's at such an angle where you feel like you have to kind of bend over to keep it where it needs to be and to keep it flat on the ground. And after a while, for me, towards the end of last season, I started feeling some soreness in my back and a little bit of back pain, and that was something that I really wanted to take care of. And so I had heard about Darwin's grip, and I looked, looked them up and, and purchased this. And to be honest, it made a world of difference. So now I actually look forward to using these rotary scissors even more and I can tell that I'm standing up straighter when I use them and it made a big difference. So again, added cost, but comfort is priceless in my opinion. It's, it's worth being comfortable for something that you're gonna be using on a regular basis. So Darwin's grip for the win and it's been a big help and I think I might even get another one of these for my string trimmer. Now as far as maintenance goes, there are just a couple of things that you need to keep in mind with these. Uh, there are two points to grease the unit. Uh, there's two hex screws here and here. And then they call for EP0 grease, which I use here. And I'll leave a link in the description for this as well. Um, there's another point here on the gearbox. There's a little bolt that needs to come out here and you can put grease in here too. So these two points here on top of the blade itself, they say to add grease every 10 hours of use. And then this one here on top, they say to add grease every 25 hours of use. Another thing they recommend doing is keeping the blades clean. Um, that's something I need to do too. I need to get a brush and just kind of clean off any extra grease or dirt or grass blades. Uh, keep things clean around here. One other thing the manual recommends is um, long-term storage, anything over than 30 days to add some grease in here as well. All of this can be taken apart. You can pull the blades off for sharpening and even deeper cleaning if you want to. Um, I'm not gonna go into that just because I haven't, I haven't had a need to do that yet. So if you ever need to sharpen the blades or replace a part, it's pretty easy to, to do that, which is nice. So overall, I really like having these. It makes a big difference when I'm cleaning up the edges around my yard. I don't have to worry about leaving nasty yellow scalp marks or worrying about being completely 100% accurate with a string trimmer. So, like I said, it is an extra investment and that's something that you need to consider if it fits your budget. I will say it does make a big difference. They are really nice to have if you're cutting short cut grass. If you have a regular height of cut, you know, inch and a half, two inches, four inches, whatever, you don't need these. Uh, these really make a difference on the shortcut turf. So I don't use those in my backyard. I only use them in my front yard and I use a regular string trimmer in my backyard. But that's my setup and that's what I've got going on here. I just wanted to take a minute and explain that because I've been getting a lot of questions about it and wanted to kind of give an overview of how that is set up and what my thoughts are. So if you are looking to get power rotary scissors, go for it. I do recommend them if you have shortcut grass and you're looking for a solution to getting rid of the scalp marks you make with a string trimmer. So there you go. That's going to go ahead and do it for me. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments section below. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. I hope this video is helpful for you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.